gentlemen, I would like to you know, express my deep gratitude and appreciation for Central Russian and European and European um, Eurasian Studies acceptance of my proposal and invited me to this uh, prestigious conference uh, as a participant. My name is Mr. Sisson. I have been a citizen of the United States for 20 years, and my native country was here in, in ethnic Yemen or Uh Feel free to misspell my first name, but but be careful spelling my last name. Megan. It may be better to you, know, you simply call me Nick. <laughs> As you can tell, uh, I have an accent, and it is uh, not from the uh, time I spent in California. If you do not have, if you do not understand something I have said, please feel free to raise your hand and ask me uh, say, uh, say it again. Before starting my uh, presentation, I would like to tell you who I am. Please watch this short uh, uh, clip. A man with brown shoes. Some serious shortcomings that may affect their future power generating capabilities. They, as, as I mentioned, the uh, um, internal factors, cultural, ethnic, religion, and separatism. Perhaps the most important factor in China Russia claim for superpower status directly related to the status of Iranian uh, regional power and its standing in the international political system means uh, anti Western versus pro Western. Maybe one of you guys. Uh, may raise your hand and ask why on earth would Russia and China's uh, influence in Eurasia will be questionable why they have tight control in the Caucasus and Central Asia and have significant allies in the Middle East, what makes them weak? I will address that point shortly. The second question, how effective is Western influence in both Central Asia and Caucasus? The short answer to this question is the fact that it is true that the West had, had some success in the uh, Caucasus and Central Asia. These success has, have not translated into the strategic level. As a result, Russia and China have been able to sustain their significant influence in both regions. Now I would like to set the stage for you. The Chinese geopoliticians have divided Eurasia into three distinct units. The uh, Western part co covered by both the NATO and EU and the eastern part by bilateral military and security treaties between the United States, Japan, 
and South Korea. And the third part, Middle Eurasia. The Middle Eurasia divided by three distinguished uh, geopolitical areas. The Middle East in the South, Central Asia, and Caucasus in the North. From now on, I will call the Caucasus, Central Asia, and the Middle East as a one unified unit, which is called Middle Eurasia. The Middle Eurasia is an open space for global competitors, such as the United States, European Union, Russia and China, and regional players such as Iran and Turkey, or Iran, Turkey and Israel. The global and regional players have very different interests, and most of the time their interests are contradicting each other. In here we see two great alliances. On one hand, the United States, uh, European Union, Israel and Turkey, and on the other hand, Russia, China and Iran, which played alone, alone but with you know, collaboration with China and Russia. Basically, these are, these are the regions that I'm talking about. So, okay. Uh, in the earlier stages, Russia tried to seal the Caucasus from Western influence through conflict and chaos management strategy. Uh, conflicts such as Abkhazia, South Ossetia, Algeria, and Nagorno-Karabakh were used to enhance their policies. After the establishment of the socio-political and economic systems in Russia, the Russian government moved from conflict and chaos management to offering regional newly independent states, military, economic, and security organizations an, an opportunity to participate. In the Central Asia case, Russia understands that it could not sustain its power in Central Asia if it were required to expand its energies to sustaining its influence on three fronts, against the West, against China, and Islamist simultaneously. In here, Russia made a strategic and business decision to share the Central Asia's geopolitical space with China in order to be able to contain the West and Islamists and, helping, uh, and hoping that it can get along with China for a long period of time. At the same time, Russia also interested in Chinese capital investment in Siberia as well. These are the, uh, the current situation. Basically, the Caucasus is the, um, Russia's zone of influence uh, in Europe, Belarus, Ukraine, and Moldova. Uh, in Kazakhstan, as, as you see, that I, I have two different uh, circles in here, in, in, not Kazakhstan, in Central Asia, that uh, basically it shows that the, the uh, Russia, Russia and China's uh, influence are over, overlapping each other because of the um, shared um, view of the uh, world that you know, West was basically you know, trying to take over the whole region. And then that's why they create that um, uh, kind of the uh, mutual um, uh, beneficial uh, collaboration with each other through CSO and other organizations. China, understand, uh, China understood that ignoring Russia and following unilateral regional policy in Central Asia would be dangerous and counterproductive, but in case Russia is weakened by Chinese unilateral regional policy would enforce Western influence in Eurasia and consequently will negatively influence the Chinese long-term strategic and tactical interests. Greatly uh, established in the Xinjiang province, enabling the Central Asian and Afghan radical Islamists infiltration into the Chinese problem, increasing national sentiment in Tibet, creating serious problems for China in accessing essential uh, central, um, essential central Asian natural resources, guaranteeing Chinese future economic growth for future uh, decades. Therefore, the Russo Chinese detente in Central Asia was a mutually beneficial act, leading in the creation of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization as a direct consequence of new strategic thinking in both Moscow and Pekin. Here in pivotal importance. Despite the Russia and China's efforts to seal the uh, to seal off the Caucasus and Central Asia from Western Islamist and regional players, their efforts cannot bear fruit without direct Iranian participation in the pro project. The Iranian anti-Western or anti-American uh, um, position became very useful to both Russia and China. The irony of the story uh, lies in the fact that Iran is doing exactly what Russia and China are looking for, to seal off the Caucasus and Central Asia from the South, 
In other words, there is no financial or human investment necessary for China to Russia to accomplish the strategic goals. The Iranian position as a geopolitical pivot strengthened Russia and China's hand in Eurasia. It shows in here, it shows Iranian zone of influence. You see uh, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. And then in the second part, the uh, Afghanistan and Tajikistan, because the cultural uh, affinity that they had, they speak the same language, same culture, and so on. Berlinski described geopolitical pivots are the states whose importance is derived from the you know, power and motivation, but rather from the sensitive location and from the consequence of the potentially vulnerable condition for the, you know, for the behavior of those strategic players. Most, uh, most often, geopolitical pivots are determined by the uh, geography, which is in some cases in giving um, them a special rule, either in defining access to important areas or in denying resources to a significant player. Berzinski's description of pivot is completely applicable to the Iranian uh, position in Eurasia. Iran, due to its excellent mm -hmm. geographical uh, position, in ca uh, is capable of denying or granting access uh, to the important regions. In the past, due to Iranian progressive directions, Iran was successfully able to contain the Soviet Union and deny the Soviet access to the bottom waters. However, following the uh, frictions arising from American opposition to the Iranian Revolution, Iran has successfully changed the balance of power. Iran this time denied the West from accessing the southern sphere of the Soviet Union, Caucasus and Central Asia. Despite the Iranian capabilities to influence the region uh, due to its soft and hard power, Iran's antagonistic relations with the West and its need for protection have seriously limited Iranian actions. Iran basically recognized the Caucasus and Central Asia as a Russian and Chinese zone of influence in exchange uh, China and Russia will assist the Iranian regime to survive against the Western pressure due to its controversial nuclear, power, nuclear program. In other words, Russia and China consider Iran as a buffer zone that does not allow the West to have direct access to the Caucasus and Central Asia. The Iranian position in the area is very important for both the West and Eurasian powers. The nations of the West cannot afford to be sealed up from the uh, Middle Eurasia through China, Russia, and uh, Iranian efforts. Uh, given the particular needs, the Western nations need to take affirmative action concerning you. At the same time, Russia and China are trying to keep the status quo as far as possible, an isolated Iran weak at the same time strong enough to resist Western pressure. Rajab Safarov, specialist on Iranian <coughs> affairs in Russia, but in one of his interviews with the Voice of America, has clearly uh, mentioned that dangers in accepting a nuclear war. The, uh, the, uh, the threat is less dangerous for Russia than having a progressing Iran in, the, in, in, the doors, in our, our doorstep. In other words, any significant changes in Iran's domestic politics will greatly affect the Russia, the Russia and China. Again, in the same program, Safarov mentioned that regime change in Iran would negatively affect the Russian uh, security and influence as well. Russia will lose at last, uh, 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 lose the last drop of its influence in the Caucasus and Central Asia. More importantly, it will influence the structure of the Russian state, and even the very existence of Russia will be undermined. There are a few different reasons why uh, Safarov is so worried about the Iranian political transformation from a theocratic uh, to a democratic regime and possible return of Iran into the Euro Euro-Atlantic um, infrastructure. First, the new Iranian government would be more or less democratic. At the same time, Iran would, uh, would assume a progressive foreign policy. Second, Iran has uninterrupted and open borders with Caucasus and Central Asia, 2,500 kilometers. Third, a progressive Iranian foreign policy would support an independent regional policy from China and Russia. Iran might assume an increasingly active role in the region, which would eventually significantly reduce the Russian and Chinese influence in, in Middle Eurasia. The, this 
alternative would significantly improve pro-Western Iran's influence in the region. The reduction of Chinese and Russian influence in the middle of Eurasia will have significant negative impact on both countries. <coughs> this is what will happen if uh, Iran becomes this is the whole area. We will be uh, will fall upon. Will be, um, lose, Russia will lose, Russia and China will lose. In basically, the Caucasus and Central Asia. And then we start to, we start to see that the new uh, new conflicts will arrive if uh, Russia and China lose um, Central Asia and Caucasus. The reduction of Chinese and Russian influence in the Middle Eurasia Asia will have significant negative impact on both countries. In the Russian case. Russia would lose uh, uh, its last hope to have direct access to the Middle East. The separatist forces in North Caucasus and the Volga region, uh, this is in China, uh, this is North, uh, North Caucasus, right now is in the more pro uh, uh, conflict, but that would be much more in the future if um, that scenario happened. And then Volga region in the, in the uh, middle of the Russia, in uh, Bashkiria and Tataristan area. Uh, right in, the, uh, in that area. The separatist forces in both Caucasus uh, and the Volga region, uh, Tataristan and Bashkiria, would have a better position for which to revolt against the central government while improving the direct land connection to Iran and consequently to the West. The possible uh, civil war in the Caucasus and Volga region would consume the last drop of Russian power forever. The, the least possible scenario would include the further weakening of Russia's position in Siberia. In the Chinese case, like Russia, China would also suffer from emboldened separatist forces in Xinjiang province and Tibet, which may uh, cause serious problems for, uh, for the uh, central government and possible partition of the country. In the past week, a weakened Chinese position in the Middle Eurasia and West China would also bring serious geopolitical changes in the region. We might uh, envision one or more of the following possibilities. The possible declaration of independence by Taiwan, the collapse of the North Korea, or the Chinese withdrawal from you know, in the China, Pacific Rim, and Africa. Conclusion. One can conclude that Iran is, a, is in position either to assist Russia to China and China to increase their global reach and influence in Eurasia, or break their power and force them to accept being third level power. The future will demonstrate whether I'm right or wrong. However, based on, based on recent current world, world, world events, political and historical analysis, I believe here will, pay, will play a significant role as a kingmaker in a Eurasian landmass. The most tantalizing possibility for us to consider could include the decision by Iran to join the Eurasian Euro-Atlantic Club. In this case, I believe Iran could become the master of the Middle Eurasia where the Middle East, Central Asia, and Caucasus are crossing each other. Thank you. Thank you.